I am back from the ashes of defeat and have returned to my former glory. No more top five, no more top seven, no more top zero somehow. This time I'm making a full top 10 list full of plump and juicy anime that I have personally picked for you to dine on. Anyway, I don't have all day, so let's just get to telling you about the anime that finished its airing in 2019 that I enjoyed. Number 10, Attack on Titan Season 3. Back in my 2017 list, I talked about how I preferred the character and world building second season of Attack on Titan over the heavy plot twisting first season. However, I would be lying if I said I didn't entirely miss the excitement that those plot twists brought with them. It was kind of like a roller coaster in that way. This can make an enjoyable show, but the problem with the style is that, like a roller coaster, these types of shows can come off as all feeling the same if they just rely on the roller coaster aspects too much. However, Season 3 of Attack on Titan comes in and is able to have its cake and eat it too. It takes all the world and character building from Season 2 and goes back to the Season 1-esque plot twists. This combination helps this roller coaster feel grounded and more satisfying because of the buildup. It also helps that the stunning animation is on full display. All these elements turned Attack on Titan into a show that was fun in the moment but ultimately forgettable, into a series I'm fully invested in, and with the last season on the horizon, I'm ready to see this ride to the end. Number 9, Black Fox. Because Black Fox is just a better Marvel movie than any of the other Marvel movies. I don't hate Marvel movies. Superhero origin stories is a format that leads itself well to creative and compelling storytelling, fitting nicely into the classic hero's journey template. But just like roller coaster anime, there are only so many different ways you can tell a superhero origin story before it gets stale, and Black Fox for sure falls into this category. However, what makes Black Fox stand out is that its story is just one part of what makes it enjoyable. What really makes this movie so much better in my eyes than any other Marvel movie is its visuals. First of all, the animation itself is amazing, and not in the flashy lots of movement kind of way, but in the way where everything has a good sense of weight and momentum that makes it exciting. And the directing of each scene adds to this excitement, being well paced where it feels like there's not time wasted in this hour and a half movie. And to top it off, its character designs are a perfect mix between cute and cool, which is quickly becoming my favorite aesthetic. So while this movie is a bit weak narratively, if you're a fan of the medium of animation, it's a good time. Number 8, The Demon Girl Next Door. The most interesting thing about this show is its ability to comment on serious and heavy themes, while at the same time being one of the funniest cute girl shows I've seen in a while. The show's main conceit is that the two main characters are a magical girl and a demon that are fated to battle. However, the magical girl is disillusioned toward combat, and the demon is an innocent girl who wouldn't hurt a fly. So the main underlying joke is the contrast between trying to play out this destiny to fight, but because of their personalities, end up failing and becoming friendly instead. In the moment to moment of the show, this aspect is played for laughs. However, there are times in the show where this contrast is used to convey its larger themes. Because the truth is that these girls would make really good friends under any other circumstance, but that friendship is not allowed to happen because of the roles that they have been forced into. So the comedy scenes have a bit of a tragic undertone to them. But what makes this show so heartfelt is the girls' willingness to fight through this. Despite what the world around them says, they come to understand that they can help each other and work together to get through it. So that's what makes this show not only a great comedy, but also have a good dramatic arc that puts it at number 8 on my list, even if the weaker side plots and characters keep it from going any higher. Number 7, Manaria Friends. Another gal pal show, but this time instead of being funny and heartfelt, it's cozy and heartfelt. Emphasis on the cozy, because that's the show's main appeal, and I enjoy the way that it goes about achieving this as not to come off too boring. Of course it has the conventional ways of making a show cozy and relaxing, such as calming music, pretty backgrounds, and quiet moments. But what stops me from falling asleep watching it while still being relaxing is how the story elements are portrayed and how the story is structured in general. There's still tension and conflict in the show, but the emotions of that are very subdued. Instead of loud, obvious emotions, there are more quiet, complex feelings at the forefront of every conflict. These subtle emotions go for positive emotions as well. Most interestingly, in the way that the show outright skips over would-be emotional climaxes to arcs, and just using clever writing to imply that they happened. So the audience gets the feeling that the conflict in the show resolved peacefully, without disrupting the overall relaxing feeling of the show. All of this, in combination with the short episode length, gives the show a good mixture of coziness while not being boring to make this one of the easiest watches of the year. Number 6, Demon Slayer. Going from a relaxing show to the complete opposite, Demon Slayer is your classic coming-of-age shonen action show. If you've been following anime at all within the last year, then it's no surprise to you that the show is well-liked. And I like this show for pretty much the same reasons. All the characters are likable, it has really sick animation by the people over at Ufotable, and it has great pacing with no filler episodes. But what intrigued me about this show is how Japanese-y it is, especially compared to the more Western-influenced shonen show, Hero Academia. For example, the first arc of the story has the main character training in the mountains for years while showing little to no progress. 
This is not one of those go off and train for a while and get a new technique kind of situations. He actually spent years of his life doing the same thing every day, all while not seeming any closer to his goal. Until all at once, at the end, his perseverance paid off. This theme of perseverance is a large aspect of Buddhism, and while other shows have this theme to some extent, Demon Slayer takes it up a notch to show the extreme strain and hopelessness that this comes with. There are also other interesting japanese elements to it, such as being set during the interesting Taisho period. So even if you're a total weeb or just a fan of fun action stories, or both, Demon Slayer is overall a good time. Number 5, A Certain Magical Index 3 and A Certain Scientific Accelerator. Grouping these two together because they're both part of the Index series and I feel similarly about them. To people who know how huge of a fan of the Index series I am, it might come as a surprise to see it this low on my list. However, these two do fall a bit short compared to previous seasons. Index 3 has pacing and overall production issues, and Accelerator's story is a bit weak. But just because these shows are not as strong as they could have been, they still have the core appeal of the Index series. That being the crazy world and characters and how both of these things interact. Index 3 expands on the world massively, getting parts of the world outside of Academy City involved, and pretty much every character from the previous seasons comes back to do something impactful. Meanwhile, Accelerator is about one of the most interesting characters in the series, and it knows how to take advantage of it, frequently putting him in situations that emphasize his crazy and maniacal behavior, all while introducing its own characters that have their own stories and behavior that bounce off of him well. So while these shows end up not as good as they could have been, if you enjoy the core appeal of the Index series, you'll find plenty to like about them. Number 4, That Time I Got Reincarnated as a Slime Ever since the massive popularity of Sword Art Online back in 2012, isekai shows have taken up a very large portion of anime that gets made, and most of them suck! Which is unfortunate because the idea of throwing someone into a drastically different world than they are used to and seeing how these two affect each other is fundamentally an interesting concept. But most isekai shows just end up being generic adventure shows. This slime isekai, however, does take full advantage of the potential of this genre. For starters, the main character uses his outside perspective to understand the core issues that plague the war-torn fantasy world. Then, it uses his old peaceful world as a model to help his new one find the same peace. During all of this, he also seeks to deepen his knowledge of this new world by exploring different parts of it and understanding the people who live there, which allows the story to naturally introduce new characters and build on the world. In addition to its unique aspects, the show's more conventional aspects are also well above average. This includes the fluid animation, fun side characters, and its hilarious sense of humor. All of this definitely deserves it a spot on my list, and makes me wonder how other isekais can't be half as good as this one. Number 3, Beastars. From a distance, it might be surprising that a 3D CGI show about animal people is this high on my list. These doubts are quite justified. 3D anime has a pretty bad reputation for seemingly being at odds with the strengths of anime, but the main issue is that 3D animation often tries too hard to look like anime and always ends up falling short. Beastars, however, steps away from that to focus on what 3D animation can do that 2D can't. Like Orange's previous work, Land of the Lustrious, Beastars experiments with a lot of perspective shots. However, in this show, this is taken even further by focusing on the amount of movement that's possible in 3D that would not be feasible if you had to worry about having to draw every single frame. This includes things like subtle movements by the characters to more obvious things like having the camera fly around the characters as they move to create frantic scenes. Even the use of animal characters is taken full advantage of to tell an interesting story. The underlying conflict of the show, where carnivores have an inner desire to eat herbivores, can be interpreted to represent several different ideas. And the show knows this, and puts the characters in the show into a ton of wild situations to bring out these different interpretations to the forefront of the story, which keeps the show entertaining and full of new ideas. So the mix between creative animation and tons of interesting themes is what puts it this high on my list. Number 2, Carol and Tuesday. For having the best use of music and storytelling that I've seen in a long time, if not ever. This is mostly due to how integral music is to the story. First of all, the story uses traditional anime storytelling to be about music in general. It has a bunch of references to real-life musicians and the industry and culture that surrounds them. The show also mainly focuses on two struggling musicians trying to make it big. And with just the multifaceted characters and good pacing, the show is entertaining enough on its own. But what really pushes the show over the top is its themes of how music can communicate and connect people on deeper levels than words alone. Specifically, what is cool about this is how this message is communicated. Not only do the characters in the show use music to communicate things to each other that they can't with words alone, but the show itself does the same thing with the viewer. Throughout the show, there are full-on musical sequences that portray the emotional arcs of the story. This gives the viewer a unique understanding that would not be possible with traditional anime storytelling techniques alone. 
That's not to say that the show does not have good storytelling outside of these musical sequences, because it absolutely does. But what really makes this show special is its ability to combine this music with the traditional anime storytelling to communicate its story in a way that is deeper and more nuanced than those two things would be able to do alone. It also helps that the music itself is also good, often being done by a lot of international guest musicians. So if you're a fan of anime storytelling and music at all, then this show is a real treat that's not worth missing out on. And without further delay, my favorite anime of 2019 is... Mob Psycho 100 Season 2. Back in 2016, when the first season came out, I already thought the show was great. It had inventive animation, likable characters, and a good positive message of striving to improve yourself. However, Season 2 comes in and takes everything that made the first season good and improves on it in every single way, bringing out the potential in the series. For example, back in Season 1, its message of self-improvement was treated as an ideal that the characters were aiming for. But, Season 2 tackles a lot of the difficulties that self-improvement comes with, focusing on the willingness to question one's core ideals that this requires. This of course causes a lot of intense emotions, which ties into how the second season improves on its characters, specifically how much attention is given to their emotions. Season 1 was already pretty good at letting its characters feel and express their emotions, even going so far as to having the powers of the main character be based around his emotions. But Season 2 is a lot more willing to spend large sections of an episode, or an entire episode, inside a single character's head. During these times, we gain a deep understanding of how these painful changes affect them. But what makes the show so enjoyable and inspiring is that the characters always find ways through this pain of self-improvement, and end up better people because of it. However, what really puts this show at number one on my list is its ability to combine these dramatic themes with classic shonen action. For example, at one point, a villain's cynical worldview is proven to be true, but the hero finds a way to accept this and spin it in a positive light that will help better himself and the world. This one storyline is able to all at once support its core message, flip the trope of the hero proving the villain wrong, and still have a satisfying fight scene. And of course, the animation is also a step up and works with all of these elements, being some of the most experimental and expressive animation I've seen in an action show. With its complex worldviews, relatable and lovable characters, and breathtaking animation, Mob Psycho 100 Season 2 was able to take an already great show and make it into the most enjoyable show of the year. And that's the end of my anime of the year list. Overall, another solid year of anime, and nothing else. Yep, the end of 2019 definitely does not indicate anything special, so I'll see you all next year. Bye! Wait a minute, 2019 is the end of a decade! And more surprising is that I've been making an anime of the year list for every year in the decade. Hmm. However, I change my mind about anime all the time, so I actually disagree with most of my old lists. I wonder if there's some way I can compile and update my old list to create a full retrospective of the decade. You already know where this is going. My next anime of the year video will be my top 100 anime of the 2010s. Yes, I am crazy, and yes, this will take a while. I still need to rewatch shows I'm unsure about, go back and make sure I didn't miss anything I would like, and then organize and write a huge list. But I'm aiming to have this all done and available to the public sometime during summer of 2020. So, I hope you all stick around to enjoy that. In the meantime, feel free to check out some of my other videos, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!